oak processionary moth, Thaumatopia processionaria, feeds on oak leaves and can cause severe defoliation of our native oaks. It has been receiving a lot of media interest recently. The photograph on the top of this slide illustrates the adult moth, which is brown and has a very fluffy head. Typically, it is between 1 and 2 centimetres in length and has a wingspan of 30 to 32 millimetres. It is extremely similar in appearance to many of our native harmless moths. The lower photograph illustrates the caterpillar, or larva, of this moth. It is the caterpillar stage which causes the damage to the oak trees. The long and short white hairs are extremely characteristic and there is also a dark stripe running along its back. Oak processionary moth is native to central and southern Europe, but now it has spread northwards. So the moth is present in the UK now. We have had three outbreaks of breeding oak processionary moth. All of them are in southern England. This slide illustrates the distribution of the moth so far. You can see in the centre is a large outbreak affecting west and southwest London and Surrey. They were, this was discovered in 2006 and includes the Elmbridge and Spelthorne districts of Surrey. There is a smaller outbreak in Bromley and Croydon in South London, which was discovered in 2012. There's another one in Pangbourne in West Berkshire, which was recorded in 2010. In this map, the red dots illustrate where the oak processionary moth was found, whilst the green dots illustrate places where they were looked for but not found. Currently, it is thought to be impossible to eradicate the outbreak in London and Croydon. Attempts are being made, however, to manage and minimise its side and spread, as well as the impact that the moths will have. The Pangborn outbreak was very small and no nests were found in 2013 or 2014 compared to the 61 found in 2011. So it is possible that this outbreak is close to eradication. However, pheromone traps caught five adult male moths in 2013 and three in 2014, indicating that the species has not been eliminated from the area. The Forestry Commission continues to work with West Berkshire Council to eradicate the outbreak. Oak processionary moth introductions also occurred in Leeds in 2009 and Sheffield in 2010, but the populations did not establish. All of these outbreaks have occurred because of accidental introductions of the moth and are thought to have originated from egg plaques that were on young oak trees that were imported. So what is the threat that the oak processionary moth poses? Well, the caterpillars threaten the health of oak trees because they feed on the leaves. Large populations completely strip oak trees bare of their leaves. They also leave them vulnerable to attack by other pests and diseases. And the trees are less able to withstand adverse environmental events such as drought and flood. In addition to the risk that the caterpillars pose to the oak trees, they also pose a public health risk. The caterpillars have thousands of tiny hairs which contain an irritant called thaumatopian. If you come into contact with these urticating hairs or the hairs that have been shed in their nests, you may get a severe skin rash as illustrated in this photograph. Less commonly, people have suffered from sore throats, breathing difficulties and eye problems. This public health risk can also apply to our animals and a number of dogs have been affected during their walks in London parks where the oak processionary moth is present. In the photograph at the bottom showing a cluster of oak processionary moths you can see their hairs quite clearly and in fact the image to the left hand side is a close up of the hairs. Interestingly it is not actually the long hairs that are the problem it is the shorter hairs in between them that contain the irritant. The real problem comes when these hairs detach from the caterpillars and are blown around in the wind. It is also possible for the caterpillars to shed these hairs as a defence mechanism. 
So even if you don't come into direct contact with the caterpillars or their nests, you may still suffer from these symptoms. It is very important that you do not touch or approach inhabited or abandoned nests or caterpillars, nor should you attempt to move them, otherwise you may end up with a severe skin rash like this. So what are the signs and symptoms of this pest? What do you need to be looking out for and when might you see something that could indicate that it is present? Well we've already discussed the adult moth, but here it is again and you can see it has a very fluffy head and brown coloration. You might see it in mid to late summer as that tends to be when they emerge from their pupae. You would have to be quite quick though because they only live for about three days and during that time they are very busy they need to mate and lay their eggs. The eggs are laid as egg plaques, like these illustrated in the photographs. They're approximately three centimetres long and are laid on twigs between August to May the following year. Usually they're on small branches and twigs high up in the canopy and because of this, this is probably the most difficult stage to survey. It is a little bit easier to look for the egg plaques during the winter as the leaves are absent from the trees, but you would probably need binoculars. The eggs are capable of overwintering on the trees and can tolerate temperatures as low as minus 20 degrees centigrade. The caterpillars emerge from the eggs the following spring, usually between mid and late April. This slide illustrates the larval stages. There are five or six instars that the caterpillars go through. The image on the top left hand side illustrates what they look like when they first hatch out in springtime. This is usually between April and May and the caterpillars are only two millimetres long at this stage. You can see they're still clustering around the egg plaques. The image below is the second stage. At this point they're still less than a centimetre long and you would find them at this stage between mid-April and mid-May. The photograph in the middle is that of the third instar. By now the caterpillars are around one centimetre long and they reach the stage in May. The image on the right hand side shows the fourth larval stage. And when they reach this size, this is when they begin to process down lower in the tree to feed and build nests. This is most likely to be the stage that you would actually observe. After windy weather, you may actually find some of the caterpillars on the ground. When the caterpillars get to a certain stage of development, they begin to build these distinctive white, silken webbing nests on the trunks and branches of oak trees. They're almost never woven amongst the leaves. They're usually roughly semispherical or teardrop in shape, just as those illustrated in these photographs and they can be seen between June and mid-July. When there are very heavy infestations, nests can merge to create very large super nests. Once the nests have been built, the caterpillars tend to spend most of their time in them and they come out at dawn and dusk to feed. The caterpillars can also leave white silken trails like this one illustrated on the right hand side on the trunks and branches of oak trees in early summer. The nests and trails become discoloured after a short time and that makes them more difficult to see. Once they are finished with, they eventually collapse and spent nests can sometimes be seen on the ground beneath oak trees. Remember that these nests may contain lots of hairs and so should not be handled. The oak processionary moth caterpillars have a distinctive habit of moving about in late spring and early summer in nose to tail processions from which they derive their name. These processions can be wedge shaped where there is one leader with rows of caterpillars following behind in a wedge shape. Sometimes there is just a line of caterpillars two or three individuals wide as illustrated in this photograph. The caterpillars live almost exclusively in oak trees and will generally only attack other trees if they become very short of oak leaves to eat. 
Furthermore, it is unlikely that you would find these caterpillars on fences and similar structures, like you would do with some other caterpillars. They will almost always be seen in or near oak trees, and even when they're seen on the ground, there will normally be an oak tree nearby. Once the caterpillars have gone through all their larval instars, they gather together in their nest to pupate. This usually takes about four weeks. The adult moths then emerge in mid to late summer. This shows you what a badly infested oak tree might look like. There's a greatly reduced canopy because of the severe defoliation from the feeding larvae. If you were to look closely at the leaves themselves, you could see that the leaves have actually been skeletonized so that the leaf veins or skeleton remain, but all the soft tissue has gone. This feeding damage is quite distinctive and noticeable, and it is a good sign to look out for. Lookalike symptoms can be produced by some of our native moths and caterpillars, such as the larvae of the lackey moth. These can be confused with oak processionary moth because they also construct webbing nests on oak trees. They are usually seen between April and June. Their morphology is very different from the oak processionary moth, however, as they have these distinctive orange and blue stripes. Another native caterpillar which can be confused with oak processionary moth is the brown-tailed moth caterpillar. Its larvae are occasionally found on oaks, although they are more common on hedgerow trees such as blackthorn and hawthorn. The larvae are dark brown and hairy, like oak processionary moth, although they are slightly different in that they have white marks down their sides and a characteristic pair of orangey-red warts at their tail. The brown-tailed moth also constructs tough webbing nests and the caterpillars emerge in spring to feed communally until about the end of May. The hairs of the brown-tailed moth are also irritating and so you should avoid any contact with the larvae or their nests. These two native caterpillars do not produce any silk webbing nests but both have been mistaken for oak processionary moth. The first is the buff tip moth whose larvae feed on many deciduous trees, including oak, between July and October. This is later than the oak processionary moth larvae. The caterpillars are very hairy, and as a result could be confused with oak processionary moth, although their bodies are very differently patterned. The buff tip moth caterpillars have a distinctly patterned yellow and black stripy body. The lower photograph is that of the vaporer moth. This is very common in parks and gardens, and the caterpillars occur between May and August on many deciduous trees and shrubs. They are hairy, and they're also common on oak trees. However, they are very differently patterned to oak processionary moth and should not be confused. So what are the biosecurity measures that should be applied if you encounter the oak processionary moth? Well, high-risk biosecurity measures apply. There is a greater risk of spreading oak processionary moth caterpillars when they are emerging, as they are still small and very difficult to spot. So much greater vigilance is required in the months of March, April and May. It is very important not to move any oak material outside the oak processionary moth affected area unless it is absolutely necessary. It should be retained on site if possible until its movement no longer presents a risk of spreading the pest. Larvae can remain hidden in and around the soil at the base of trees, and larval nests can be placed on the outside of pots or on adjacent packaging material if there is an infestation on nursery-grown trees. Therefore, any tree with defoliation but no larvae should still be treated with suspicion, and the soil, pot and adjacent material should be checked carefully. Remember, do not attempt to move nests or caterpillars. If you suspect oak processionary moth, inform us straight away through Tree Alert.